First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me. I'm thrilled, excited, and honored to be with you today. My lecture will be about how can we gain without pain. Let's start from the beginning. Physical activity increases cardiovascular fitness, muscle mass, healthy blood glucose regulation happens like that, reduces visceral fat, triglycerides, low density lipoproteins. On the other hand, sedentary lifestyles that promote adipose tissue accumulation, systemic inflammation, oxidative damage, and chronic pain. And this is the prelude for medical disorders. There will be a lot of excuses why you cannot exercise. Time restraints, career responsibilities. But there is a movement restriction due to obesity or aging, chronic pain, individual choices. Uh, exercise also demands commitment, time, energy, stamina, and persistence. And as a result, over a billion of individuals are now obese. Obesity leads to insulin resistance, which leads to type 2 diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, which kills about 18 million individuals yearly. Visceral adipose tissue will lead to excess triglycerides, lipotoxicity, inflammation, non-alcoholic steatosis, the fatty liver, and cirrhosis. And this is what fatty liver looks like, not a pretty sight. This is what triglycerides is. You see how all these triglycerides are going inside your arteries and basically obstruct your blood flow. There is another major problem with visceral fat. It basically has the highest number of AC2 receptors. This is the receptors in your cells that COVID-19, the spike of COVID-19, connects, fuses, and releases the COVID-19 contents into your cells. And that's when it hijacks your cellular machineries and starts duplicating itself. So the greater the amount of fat, the greater danger for severe symptomatology and for COVID-19 taking over. Whereas muscle has the least AC2 receptors and immediately comes to mind that if only we could change fat with muscle, we could somewhat protect ourselves from the virus spreading inside our bodies. Recently, I published a book on COVID-19 and it's called Checkmate by Protein, Invisible Enemy, and how dangerous it is because it mutates, as it mutates, it becomes more contagious, unlike previous virus, viruses that when they mutated, they became extinct. And also what are the, uh, um, like if we can use exercise and attend to exercise to strengthen our immune system and basically help us protect ourselves from the disease taking over us and killing us. There are several ways in the market that uh, can reduce uh, fat, uh, lasers, radio frequency. There are no peer reviewed radio frequency studies on visceral fat reduction, however. Yes, subcutaneous fat is great, but not the visceral fat. And that's what holds all the inflammation and toxicity, quite a lot of it. And there are laser studies that uh, report that there has been a visceral fat reduction. However, what they do, they combine laser treatment and exercise. So we don't know if it was the laser treatment or the exercise that gave you the results. And additionally, these studies, when they're duplicated, they do not offer external validity because when they're duplicated, they don't get the same results. They don't get visceral fat reduction that they got in the first study. Another issue is laser and RF like policies releases triglycerides, glucose, and toxins in the bloodstream. And without exercise, they actually remain in the bloodstream and they clog your arteries. Now, remember the toxicity part. Toxicity, that is a lot in visceral deposit, no fat, increases hunger. Why? Because it interferes with your entire endocrinological system. 
it interferes with uh, insulin and leptin resistance. It promotes it basically promotes insulin and leptin resistance and interferes with the appetite controlling hormones, ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin is an orexogenic hormone, basically increases appetite, leptin decreases appetite is an anorexic hormone. And because these are imbalanced, hunger increases. So toxicity increases hunger. The more toxic you are, the more hungry you are. So what can we do? How can we basically deal with the visceral fat that doesn't just wrap itself around its organs, but as you can see, it invades them. Like this is the fatty liver. It's invaded the fatty liver. It cannot allow the liver to function. So it cannot be removed through radio frequency or, or lasers or ultrasound, or, or not from liposuction, obviously, or plastic surgery. But what can we do about it? And why is visceral fat a problem? Again, inflammation and toxicity. I have all of these studies on the right that say just that. Uh, visceral fat will create. Uh, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uh, injury, infection, arthritis, Alzheimer's, asthma, ca uh, lung cancers, uh, and so on. So, so we have slimming with lasers and OF and other methods. However, neither laser nor OF, nor liposuction or plastic surgery will increase metabolism or balance hormones or decrease hunger. The four results will rebound. Whereas fitness is a safer way of getting to that goal because it increases metabolism, balances hormones, reduces hunger. Therefore, there will be no rebound of results, which is the desirable effect. Now, a lot of results we can get with exercise. Exercise will reduce the visceral fat and will reduce uh, uh, BMI and uh, give us fitness. However, BMI does not go down with just uh, four months of exercise. It takes much longer. Also fitness, you see the self fat reduction, but you don't see the fitness or the BMI decrease in a very short time, well, short time, four, five months. It takes much longer. And of course, exercise balances hormones, but it's easy to exercise if you're young and fit, but what about if you're overweight or if you're old? That's not as easy. Now, very strange exercise that's necessary to get rid of your fat. With overtraining, you cause hormonal imbalance. Cortisol and testosterone have this inverse relationship. When cortisol goes up, testosterone goes down. So during exercise, you're straining yourself, you increase the cortisol. For some reason, testosterone will go down. So you basically start losing weight, but because your cortisol is up and increases your hunger and your testosterone is down, you have a weight gain again. You have a uh, visceral fat increase, you have low sex drive, uh, low energy, uh, higher susceptibility to infections. And it's basically all the benefits of exercise are compromised. There is another technology that came out of London University, and there's a lot of publicity on that. It's a simulated effortless exercise by uh, Jerry Pollock, who was also the co-inventor of the first pacemaker. And he started uh, uh, 27 years of research. Now we have about 40 years of research on this uh, same technology. Initially, Goldberg, on, in London University, looked at gene expression and we found a rapid muscular hypertrophy, 250% increase in the RNA content of the muscles and repression of the fast type genes and activation of the skeletal slow type genes. Now, what does it do? I'll show you how basically the, the how you can see visually the contraction, very slow contraction, start very, very slow, the secure in slow motion. That you can do that with exercise, but it takes a large stamina and a lot of effort. And uh, it's eight seconds. It's not like the mass stimulators that send electrical currents to depolarize individual small muscles leading to bridges. This is like an exercise that happens that your body, your entire body participates. And there is a lot of papers, uh, most of which I wrote, and in many different journals, in the Journal of Aesthetic Nursing, there is a paper 
with exactly the same name of this uh, lecture, again, without name, we're going to spoil this effortless exercise solution. Um, there are, you cannot find all that in Google Scholar. If you go there and you put in some yourself, you can see all the articles, scientific research publishing, more articles. Um, uh, these are all clinical trials and uh, other publishing journals, uh, different journals, so the Journal of Technology, Metabolism Research, other journals. And let me give you what basically is the procedure, more or less. First is a blood test with a test for different variables, uh, metabolic, P3, CRP, that's inflammation, uh, fasting, BP, NPP, insulin and glucose. Uh, if you do diabetics and pre-diabetics, then you have a uh, preprodanta scale measurement that measures BMI, overall fat, VAT, uh, and uh, muscle mass. You have sonograms and you do the procedure you do a one hour procedure, 12 or 15 treatments, and then you test the same variables again, and you do sonograms again to compare before and after on the same subjects. And what we saw, you can see the results on testosterone and cortisol. What you see is that all subjects, cortisol went down, testosterone went up. That's the opposite that we saw with exercise here. Um, with exercise, cortisol goes up, testosterone goes down. Here, the mean average testosterone increase was plus 42.23%, and the cortisol decrease percentage was 18.42%. Leptin and ghrelin, very important. What you saw is that leptin, the anorexic hormone, went up plus 10.82%, and the ghrelin, the oryxogenic hormone, the one that increases the appetite, went down 7.82%. 35%. Very important. All of these fluctuations were within the normal range because you don't want the leptin to be too high, then you have hyperlipidemia. Now, you, and you don't want the ghrelin to go very low because ghrelin is anti inflammatory. So it has to be within the normal range. And that's what we saw that basically people that had higher above the normal range, it was reduced, and those with a below the normal range, it was increased. Now, what we saw with uh, blood glucose, with diabetics, uh, fasting, and PP, what we saw is that you see how the diabetics, uh, they had fatty liver previously and diabetes, they went down, the uh, blood uh, fasting glucose percentage was 38.44%. But you can see that most of them, some of them got to the normal level, but a lot of them got into the pre-diabetic, like a step down. And uh, the uh, PP glucose, uh, again, was minus 39.1%. And again, some of them got uh, down to even from diabetic to normal. And uh, a lot of them went from diabetic to pre-diabetic. And when we looked at uh, pre-diabetics, most of them were down to not a couple of them remained at the very diabetic, uh, pre-diabetic level. Both the uh, fasting insulin and the PP insulin. And we found a uh, fasting, fasting insulin decrease of minus 54.52%, and the PP insulin decrease was minus 44.7%. Triglycerides, we did it different for diabetics and for diabetics, we did not want to confirm the results. And we found a percentage of the triglycerides decrease was minus 20.56%. And the high density lipoprotein, because you want the triglycerides to be down, high density lipoprotein to be up, that was increased by 49.12%. And as you can see, most diabetics. Uh, went to the normal level, and some of them remained in, but they were all improved. And same thing with the HDL, M most of them improved, and some of them got into the normal level. Now, when you looked at uh, pre diabetics, the results obviously were much better because they were much better off to start, they were healthier to start with. So, average decrease in triglycerides was minus 22.88. And the uh, increase in DHDL was 30.34. And you can see most of them went 
from prediabetic levels went to normal levels. And again, with the HDL, went to the normal level of HDL, which is very significant because you made these people be healthier. Now, BMI, overall fat, visceral fats, skeletal muscle mass, what we saw is BMI decrease was minus 7.5. Mean average overall fat decrease was minus 26.14. Mean visceral fat decrease was minus 28.17. Mean SMM increase was plus 28.02. Now, remember, if the diabetics and pre-diabetics they're not gonna show as much as a normal person. Normal people will show oh, much higher uh, visceral fat decrease, but um, the diabetes, pre diabetes, they just need more treatments. And this is the uh, T test, statistical significance results. Everything was very highly significant. Blood glucose fasting MPP for the diabetics, insulin fasting MPP for the pre diabetics, triglycerides for the diabetics and the pre diabetics and uh, um, uh, also the uh, upper abdomen reduction CM was uh, minus 965. Only 12 treatments for that, that's all the cut measurements. Umbilicus reduction CM was minus 1032 and lower abdomen was minus 11.5. We saw an inflammation decrease uh, that was significant, very significant. BMI decrease was very highly significant overall. These are fat decreased, they have significant. Remember, all people with fatty liver, after sonogram reports, we saw no fatty liver after the uh, 15 treatments. Skeletal muscle mass increase very significant, HDL for the diabetics and diabetics again really separate them, very significant, uh, free to free the metabolism was significantly improved. This is after three treatments. We could only use certain pictures that people gave us uh, release, uh, signed release forms for. This is uh, six treatments. Before and after 15 treatments. Before and after 15 treatments. This is some people got amazing results. Some of them more moderate results, depending on their body and metabolism and where they started and how uh, healthy were to start with before and after 15 treatments, this one, before and after 15 treatments again, this particular one. Now, in other studies, what we did is we looked at creatinine and bilirubin. Creatinine exits the body as a waste product, and bilirubin, uh, basically, if you have it in excess, indicates liver problems. What, the reason why we looked at those two variables is that so many papers, research papers on COVID-19 patients, they indicated that they had elevated creatinine and bilirubin. They were even looking at them as markers of uh, the illness, of COVID-19 illness. And what we found is the mean average creatinine percentage decrease was minus 19.67. And the mean average bilirubin decrease percentage was minus 69.23. So that was very, very significant again. We looked, of course, at the CRP inflammation, that is very important. And we, and cortisol, again, we saw, we saw a minus 17.47% in cortisol percentage decrease. Everybody had that result, but it's how the percentage with which it was decreased, but everybody had a cortisol decrease. And mean average uh, CRP decrease was minus 36.87%. Again, everybody, the CRP was decreased in all subjects, 100% of the subjects. And what we saw again, the mean average VLDL decrease was minus 8.13. This is percent. That was more, um, not as helpful. We had tension, there was CBD, diabetes. So the, uh, the more advanced the medical disorder, the more time they need to go back to the normal status. Again, mean average rate of right degrees was uh, minus 14.9, again, because that sample had major problems. VLDL, triglycerides, 3D3 metabolism, bilirubin, creatinine, CRP, cortisol, HDL, that's the high density right the problem, the good cholesterol, visceral deposit tissue, uh, BMI, and of course, the uh, reduce, the reduction of uh, CM in the umbilicus and uh, above and below the umbilicus were all very, very highly 
significant according to statistical facts. And this is uh, before and after 15 treatments. This is only one treatment. This again, only one treatment. This is one treatment. And you can see the muscle toning of even in one treatment that you could see happening. And that's why we included this picture. You can see it works very fast. It's a, it's a high speed effortless exercise, basically. And uh, this is our clinical research board. Um, we have more clinicians now that they conduct research for us. And it's international, it's from England, United Kingdom, um, Aruba, Netherlands, uh, India, Japan, United States, uh, Hong Kong, and Singapore. And with this, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me and allowing me to give you all this information. And if you do have any questions, please get in touch with me at science at ilios.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have and also give you any research papers that you would like to have. Thank you very much again.